Okay. I am Dana, new to the class on 3D printing. So 3D printing, what it is and what it's good for. I'm not going to go dive deep into this stuff. It's, uh, there's so many ways to do it. There's so many different machines out there. I'm going to show you how we do it down here in the 719. Start with Chuck Hole. Chuck Hole was the guy who invented stereolithography back in '84. Basically, what that is is a uh, it's a way, software-driven way to take a 3D object and to slice it very thin so that it can be put into a different type of machine, like a 3D printer, and it will extrude each layer and rebuild the exact same physical 3D. He also developed the STL format that we use on most of our machines. And uh, before this development, most fabrication procedures were done for removing the material from a larger piece and making your final piece. I was trying to think of another way that wasn't using, you know, piece removal or subtraction. But even if you were molding something like, you know, iron, like a block, an inch of block, you have to have already modeled before you make the sand cast and then pour the metal in there. But anyway, it's a big deal. This process is called additive manufacturing, and I only covered that. So, what can you do with 3D printing? Well, obviously, everyone knows you can make things, plastic things, but also you can use it for data visualization. You can use Legos because I love Legos, but you know, like like this picture, I sold it from the internet because that's what we do. And this is a uh, this is the most used keys, and it's a three D printed image of how which key is pressed the most often. And I think that's pretty cool because you know instead of just manufacturing something or prototyping something, you're actually using uh, a device to produce something visual as opposed to just having it on a screen. So it's it's pretty cool. And then prototyping, obviously you see me over there with my CNC machine. I am trying to make this. This is a uh, this is the DEF COM badge I made for last year. This is mine. And uh, I printed it off. This is the gold version. This is a little happy bow. And uh, so for prototyping, I, I made plastic ones and I gave them out to my crew. But also, I want to make metal ones, you know. So I prototyped it into plastic, and I saw, hey, this is pretty badass. So now I'm, I converted to the G code, and now I'm just trying to set up the machine right. And you know, manufacturing with a CNC machine is 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 time consuming because it's it's very tricky, and you're breaking bits left and right. And I'm not going to say that I break bits all the time, but someone I know breaks bits all the time, and they're pricey to. Expand. You know, to replace. So, near and dear to my heart is, you know, amputations. You know, you can you can use a lightweight plastic to, you know, prototype and then actually develop and design uh, body part replacements. So, you know, a lot of people in Afghanistan, Iraq, lost their legs, my buddies, and also just for pets. So this guy, his quality of life is so much better just because someone decided to print out a kidney bean shaped uh, prosthetic, prosthesis, whatever. And uh, I, I just think this is cool because it's all about bionics. I, I love that stuff. So, oh, and this is also cool. Back, uh, back a couple years ago, I used to do brain surgery. And uh, it was in a, one of our theaters of war. And, you know, when the guy gets shot, shot in the head, basically we had to go in there and we had to cut out his skull, you know, because it's got a bullet hole in it now. It's not good for anything. So we pulled it out and breathed it the brain, you know, made, got rid of all the non-viable tissue. And, you know, but what we had when we pulled out the skull was a hole. And, you know, we, we try to save as much natural material as possible, but 
you know, just seeing this. And, you know, I could just go in there with my little calipers and measure his hole, his hole, and uh, re re break the frame or uh, skull part for him. So I think that's pretty cool. So, manufacturing, right? We did, you know, data visualization, we did uh, uh, prototyping, and manufacturing. You know, it's kind of with prototyping, but but with manufacturing, you're you're actually making an end product. So you have all these all these sectors of the economy, or whatever you want to call it, facets of life. Medical, like you saw, clothing. People are printing shoes. You got buildings, different type of 3D printers that produce concrete and produce a building in, you know, a cookie cutter building in you know a short amount of time and without any you know human uh, interaction. Well, not really interaction, but helping or human labor. Expect you know expand. Uh, food. Sure, I, I'm not sure how it tastes. You got vehicles, it's on the cover of uh, the new Make magazine. You got how to print your pretty car. Nature, this is pretty cool because it's uh, it's about, you know, redesigning coral reef. So you can, you know, re repair damage, you know, if, if reef's been damaged by boats or, you know, human shenanigans, then it replaces and it rebuilds the whole ecosystem in that area. And then I'll see here, you know, I am a soldier, retiring, but, you know, weapons, that's, it's a very, you know, it's it's a useful purpose for some type of thing. And then, but my favorite one here is art. I mean, just for the fucking beauty of creating something that you can actually touch and see. So, processes, I'm not going to go into this deep at all. There's our, there's a couple, there's, there's five listed here. But the top one, extrusion, is the one we're going to talk about because that's what that's what I use. That's what most of the maker bots and replicators and everything else. That's what that's a, that's a system they use. So uh, it's a fused deposition modeling, and the materials used are thermal plastics. I use the ABS plastic for anything that can be made gooey. So if you can extrude, you know soften it up, extrude it through a little pinpoint nozzle, and then recreate stuff. Thanks to Chuck Hole with his serial lithography. You can, you can, you know, duplicate it. So, started back last year when DC-719 was going to run this badass Wi-Fi geo-locating uh, contest within the whole Colorado Springs area. I figured, okay, why can't I just design a ring, even though it's not, there's no uh, cipher on it, but a split Split level ring, you know, the top spins one way, the bottom spins the other way, and just have something cool. It's like a, hey, thanks for showing up. Here's your badass ring. But, you know, that, that fell aside and I got busy working and stuff. So, this is the new ring I developed. Uh, I'd say probably last month, December. I wanted to give this presentation to my crew and I wanted to bring them rings. But, you know, shit happens. 3D printer didn't like it. But anyway, I found out that I did print one of these and it was just too small. I mean, it, it was badass, but it was just too thin. It, it would have been a good pinky ring for, for girls. So I uh, totally re redesigned it. But, you know, this is the trial and tribulation I had to go through. Like this right here, my machine is a 4250MC. And I mean, it's 300 degrees. This is, uh, it's, it uses two, two materials, molding material and support material. And this is the envelope temperature. But uh, anyway, you know, it's still warming up at 304 degrees. Come on, really? And I'm sticking my hand in there trying to replace the tips and nozzles. And it's just a big pain in the neck. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But uh, I, will, I will give a class on how to, how to step, how, all the processes I use to get to this point. But that was a big failure, and actually I'm kind of glad it, it was a failure because the ring was shitty. So, this is a really, really new ring, okay? After I saw that, how that ring, ring was printed, I said, okay, I want a more manly ring. And so, I made it wider, made the uh, smiley skull and crossbones guy fatter, 
And uh, you know what? My machine fucking loved it. She printed out 20 or so. Different, uh, I got 6.5 all the way to size 12 and a half step increments. And it's, it's badass. Uh, everyone likes it, that's seen it, and the, the detail is, it'll blow your mind. Because these, uh, even though you can't really see it on this picture, you will see them in real life soon. But, you know, that high resolution is phenomenal. I'm pretty happy with it. This is my dog, I take him everywhere. He's not here right now though. But that's him just chilling around because, you know, this whole process, it's not like, oh, you know, you're going to come up with a design. I use AutoCAD because I love it. Uh, I switched from 2013 to AutoCAD 2015 with this new ring because I wanted to, you know, I'm a student somewhat, and I got the software, and I wanted to, you know, use it. So I taught myself AutoCAD 2015 with the new ring, and the process does take a long time. you got to CAD it, and then you have to, you know, transport it into, you know, with a USB thumb drive or whatever into the other machine. So... It can convert it into the STLs, and the 3D printer will print it. But, you know, my dog's just chilling because he likes hanging out with mom. It's, it's as bad as the place. Uh, this one, Rofi, he's, everyone loves robots, and I definitely love bipod robots, bipod robots. But uh, these are all the parts. I'm just waiting for some servos and everything else to come in so I can build them together to get his... Who the hell doesn't want this? Just wandered around all over the fucking place. Walk my dog, maybe. Or not. Dog would chew it. Dog would slow. And rocks. Like, why the hell would you want to fucking replicate rocks? So, I had a rock here. Same one in the picture. Same one. Fucking, I don't know, seven pounds or whatever. Well, we can replicate them like this. Very light. We have something like this. It's a pretty scanner. Next engine right here, and uh, we can replicate rocks. And you might say, "Well, why do you want to replicate rocks?" Well, sometimes in the wild, you need to have rocks with. Uh, I'm not going to say video cameras or audio devices, but it could be happy, uh, helpful. So, uh, in my shop, we also do molding. This is uh, this is obviously mold material. Uh, we have a vacuum extractor, so we can do uh, hollow molds, and we can just put stuff in there that we want to put in there for whatever reason we want to do it. So we got rocks. And uh, what else is there? You know, uh, 3D printing is uh, pretty badass. I'm happy that, you know, I was forced to learn AutoCAD back uh, to 2001, 2002, and I kept kept up with it, and I wrote some list, list programs, and whatever, and uh, so next class, I'll give a little bit of introduction to AutoCAD, I'll see if I can get a free shareware version of AutoCAD or SketchUp or whatever, and uh, go through a couple classes like that, but uh, you know, that's about it, I, I didn't want to go in too deep, but just, this is something I, I, I love, I, I love creating something so unique and original, so thank you.